growth happens when we make mistakes. We don't grow when we're, we're coasting. We don't grow when everything seems to be working out in our favor. We grow when we're struggling. We grow when we do have those missteps. And so knowing that there was a purpose for this to happen in my journey, this misstep was... Hello and welcome to Finding Your Spark again. I am so glad you are here with me again today. You know, today we get to speak to Sarah Thomas, who is a personal trainer, fitness instructor, nutrition coach, business mentor, wife, mom of three, and the founder and CEO of Burn Fat and Feast. And for me, this is really, really an important conversation because we're gonna to talk today about how to create a positive mindset and the why for your success. So welcome, Sarah. Hello, and thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to chat today. Yeah, my pleasure. I am so glad you're here. Uh, you know, when, when we got to connect and I got to see your work and how profound it is and how much it impacts people, then I saw how much you talk about how we really uh, have to tap in to that joy, to that happiness, to that mindset piece in order to do anything. And I really um, agree with it and feel like this is a really great way to explore that message. So I'd love to hear about how you came up with and founded uh, Burn Fat and Feast. So I think as, as most of us entrepreneurs, when we start our business uh, and this, the businesses that start and we have so much passion and purpose behind them start from a very personal place. And that is where mine began. I have actually been in the wellness space for about 26 years, personal training, doing fitness instructing, nutrition coaching, all of those things, and may, mostly in person for a long time period of time, uh, but switched over into the online space about almost 11 years ago now. Uh, but I, I started all of this because I found myself in a place of ickiness. I found myself in a place where I wasn't happy. I was agitated. I was low on energy. I didn't feel confident. All the things that I wanted, I, I felt were lacking. I was exercising. I was eating well, but I was doing too many of the things wrong. And I talk a lot about the wellness puzzle and how there's so many little pieces to the puzzle that have to fit together well in order to create the big picture and find the happiness and find the joy and all those things. And that's what I needed to find for myself. And so Burn Fat and Feast started there. I was working out too long. I was under eating. I was doing low carb. I was, you know, doing all the things that were depriving myself over and over again, had three kids. And I just, I wanted to find what was going to work long term. And so I dove back into research. I'm a research girl. I'm, I'm kind of a nerd that way. So I dove back into, you know, the research of all the things, right? You know, not just fitness, not nu just nutrition, but how we work well socially, our mental health and all of that. And as I started to pull those pieces together, I realized, okay, if I just make some small tweaks in some of these areas things will start coming together easily. And so I started doing exactly what the name of my business is. I started to eat more and burn the fat physically. And, and the name just kind of happened because it was just kind of what we were doing. Um, but more than that, what I found was internal wellness and internal happiness. And that's the part that, you know, we don't, we can't see in a before and after necessarily. Um, but that is what I love to share with so so many people across the country is how they can find that too because I'm no special than anyone else I have three kids I run a business I do all the things for the children I cook my own meals you know I don't I don't have anybody special in my life to make my life easier and so I'm, I'm in the trenches with all of our women we work with women 40 and older uh, that's me and we are working through metabolism changes hormone changes we really want to find that 
place of mental strength so that you can stop that yo-yo dieting and feeling good and feeling bad and feeling frustrated and feeling um, successful and feeling failure. Like we're, we're done with that. And so that's, that's kind of where Burn, Fat and Fee started and what, and what we're all about. That is great. I really appreciate you talking about that. There's a lot in there that we could dive into, but this piece that you just said uh, really stuck out to me. This idea that we're we're kind of three per, three degrees off from where we want to be. We're so close, but the details matter, right? And not just the details of as you described your routine, right? The all those details of course matter, but we do the same thing with our thinking, right? And so we think like I'm on track 90% of the time, but what's going on in that other 10% of the time, right? And is it really 90% of the time? <laughs> or is it really 30% of the time and we just wanna feel better? Um, so I'd love to talk a little bit more about that, that ability to self-assess in terms of the mindset and how we interact with with that and the why. Yeah, there's there's a lot to unpack here. <laughs> and and I, I wanna start kind of you were just saying that three degrees off. And it's so true. I actually was just having an interview with one of our members earlier today and she said I was coasting. We, we were talking about how she had success and she kind of like took a few steps backwards. And we talk about wellness being a journey for a reason and mindset in itself is a journey because we've got, we take some steps forward, we take some steps backwards and it's a learning process. Um, but she started talking about coasting and that's where I was like, you know what? There, there's a, there's a lot to unpack there as far as coasting and not being intentional about some things. But I think it's also so important to recognize. And I think it was Tony Robbins that said this, he, he talks a lot about mindset, but he said success equals 80% mindset and 20% the mechanics. So, you know, doing the things or going through the motion like that, you can look at that as your 20%, but it's the mindset and pulling back into how you're thinking about things and the positivity or the or lack thereof, the abundance versus the scarcity mindset, and then how you go about that in your daily life with your why. Those things matter. And I will say from my only own personal experience that it took me a long time to really believe this, <laughs> really believe this, because I think we walk through life a lot of times going, okay, I'm going to do the, all the task things, right? All the, all the things that need to be done on the list And mindset is one of those that are, it feels a little bit, um, less tangible in our day, right? We can, we can mark off work, workout, check meal prep, check slept, check. You know, we can kind of mark those things off, but mindset feels a little bit less, actionable at times. And so I like to help our women learn how to do that. How can we make it more actionable? How can we make it more of a physical, tangible thing that we can work on on a daily basis? That's really nicely put. Uh, I love that you talked about intentionality and how when we lose our focus then for the intention, then the intention goes, right? Because this is the fabric of reality, right? We are we are interacting with these physical elements in our life and we know actually, so uh, there have been studies done about how buildings fall apart and when buildings are lived in, they fall apart far slower than when they're not lived in, even when they're maintained just as little, right? And that's the same with our intention. When we put intention on something, in our lives, in our bodies, in our worlds, something really different changes, right? Something, something is able to be glued together for, for us. And that, that connecting that to mindset, to not just ticking the boxes, right? But what's happening in the, I call it the doing the dishes space. What's happening in the moments where you're in the automatic time of your life, right? What are you doing with that time and how is it contributing or sabotaging those, those other moments where you're making all this progress and then suddenly you don't feel like working out or you don't feel like making a healthy dinner or you don't feel like doing the things that you actually want to do, right? Um, so that's really interesting. So you talked about 
uh, helping people to do that with interaction. So can you talk a little bit about how that works in your in your program? Yeah, absolutely. So there are six different things that I help walk our members through regarding a mindset and just getting in a better headspace. Because like I said, we work with women and women in general walk around in a, in a negative mind space often we feel like we need to do better with all the things and there's there's so many reasons for that that's a whole nother podcast episode i believe as to why but um but so there's six different things that we talk about and the first one is letting some things go and when i say letting some things go i'm not talking about your to-do list i'm talking about things that hold us from having an abundant mindset holding on to maybe some people in our life or ideas in our head that are no longer serving us for the goodness of our mindset. And so I always say, think through your day, go through your day in your head or go throughout your week. And if there's something that continually comes up that it, that's draining you, it's time to put it aside and, and let it go so that you can move forward. Because if not, you're not, you're not moving forward. You're, you're holding on to that and you are staying where you are currently. And within this, this is, this, this is why this is the hard work. We got to dig in a little bit here, but we also need to acknowledge that we are walking around with some limiting beliefs that we have had as children, things that maybe we have heard, things that we have been told early on in our life that we still hold as truths that are limiting beliefs that are holding us back to where we are meant to go. And so this takes some digging in to think about what you were told and it may be truly like when we're told things for so many years that we, we believe those as the truths and asking ourselves, is this true? Or why do I see this is my truth? I, I will use my personal example here and I'm, I'm not, I'm open book, so I'm not afraid to share, but I was an obese child. That was kind of part of my, my journey as to why I got into the wellness space, um, in the beginning, but I was an obese child. Um, then I turned anorexic as a teenager. So I've run the gamut of all the things in wellness. And I was told when I was younger, I was a big kid. I was always going to be a big person and I was just gonna have to learn to live with that. And then as I went through my journey, early adulthood, and I really got into the wellness space, I was told by, by people who loved me dearly that this just was not for me, that I needed to go into something else because of the way I looked, because of, um, I was a really shy kid and you know, you're, you're not a leader. And so those things I held on to for decades of my life. And I truly, I believed those things. And to this day, I have to do the work to dig into and ask myself, why, why am I believing this? And what is it that is telling me that this is the truth? And oftentimes I just take pen to paper. Pen to paper is so magical. Take pen to paper and start writing what it is that you're believing, why you're believing it, and just brain dump all those things out to really dig through to figure out what the truth is and what you've just been telling yourself is true. There's a business coach that I follow and she says, everything is working out in your favor. And so when we start saying that over and over again and, and dig through those limiting beliefs and say, everything's working out in my favor and you say it and you believe it, it will truly become your reality, but it's a daily practice. So that's the very first thing is to just start letting some things go. That is great. That is really well fleshed out. And I really appreciate that. Um, I love that you're talking about the basis of our identity because really uh, those early years are when we form those mental structures, right? Those neuro structures in our brains. And so once they're there, they're really hard to change. And you do have to be intentional about that. And you have to have practice, uh, us a specific type of practice to make that uh, leap for yourself. And so it's great that you're working with people on that exact topic. Um, it is an interesting thing to 
to identify, and I'd love to dig a little deeper on your personal history on this, if you don't mind, um, to just identify who am I with regard to this? So, you know, a lot of times when we're digging at the past, we, we dig it up. We say, okay, I got it. This person, that person, the other person, this scenario, they all contributed to my belief that this is who I am. And then we go, okay, I want to change. And then there's no structure to change. And so this is really hard to find who am I now? Who am I now? And who am I now, even though I still look the same as that person I was five minutes ago, I still feel the same as I was five minutes ago, I see, right? My whole circumstances, I live in the same place. Nothing has changed, but when we change, everything changes. So, uh, so can we talk a little bit about that process of redefining the identity, right? I love that you, you connected I had this moment of, I was overweight. I didn't like that. Then I pendulum swing to the next, right? To I'm going the other direction. Oh, now I'm underweight. Now I've sort of don't have control over this space suit that I'm wearing, right? Um, and, and yet all of it seems so tied to who I am instead of how I am. So I'd love to hear your experience with that. Yeah, that is, 100% a process. And so I think that's the very first thing for us to uh, understand is that this is not a switch. You know, you don't turn it on, turn it off. This is, this is a process. It is part of the journey. It takes work. And I often, often think of mindset now as pulling weeds, like in your mulch bed, right? You, you, you do the work, you get out there, you do the work, you pull them out and you stand there and you look and you think, Whoa, it's great. I've made such progress today. It looks amazing. I feel amazing for what I did. And the next week, they're back, right? They continually to, they continually grow because we have to keep digging in and doing the work. And so um, I don't know if that, that resonates with anybody listening, but that's something that is physical that I can see to remind myself of, oh yeah, that's not the only work we have to do. We don't only do the physical work. It's the same as far as our mental health goes, we have to continually do the work. Um, so when, when I was going through this process and now I was, when I started this process, started thinking, okay, you know what, what I've been told doesn't have to be the reality reality. It's not necessarily my truth. I was about 20 years old. So I was, I was young. Um, and I don't know that I did it all correctly or um, the most efficient through the journey, but I started, and this is where I go back to all the time. As soon as I find that there, there are limiting beliefs, self-doubts seeping into my life, I go back and say that I believe I can be X. I believe that I can make these changes. Without believing in yourself, it doesn't matter how many fans you have in your corner. It doesn't matter, matter how many people are cheering you on. If you are not believing that you can achieve or you can be or do, then that's, that's not going to create any type of lasting change. So we have to believe that you have everything that you need to succeed. You have everything. You've been given everything that you need to change your story, believing in you and the power that you have to be in control of whatever the story is that you want to create. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing that I did was I started surrounding myself with different people. Um, that, that circle that we are social beings, we are meant to be social. We should be social, but who we surround ourselves with matters. And I realized once I started believing more in myself that I had surrounded myself and I am, again, I am talking family members. I'm not just talking about friends and acquaintances. I'm talking about close people in my life. And some were family members that those people were the ones that I needed to distance myself from because those people were not allowing me to grow. They were not allowing me to be who I knew I could be and who I believed in being. Uh, and that, ooh, that's a tough one, especially when they're family members that you feel that you need to separate from or adjust distant 
yourself from. Um, and then I would say the other piece of, of early on in my journey is that I really dug into my spiritual being and who I was and what I believed in spiritually and that it wasn't all in my control, but there was a, there was a greater being. And so whatever it is that you believe in, that there's something else greater there that is helping, assisting you along the way and, and, and being your cheerleader in that corner. Um, if I, if I were to go further and explain more, I would say it, it's time to get out of your comfort zone. And, and I had to tell myself, it's if you believe that you can do this and you continue along the same path of what you've always done, you're going to get the same person, the same results, the same mindset. So we have to take a detour. We got to go the other way. We have to get out of that comfort zone and do something different. Love that. You you really did touch on several things here. I, I'd love to um, to go back a second to this idea of community. Uh, you know, there have been these studies done where um, if you try, if they, if you ask somebody what this person looks like, right, that people who know you see you as a conglomerate of all the photos of your whole life, right, of all the times they have ever seen you. Literally, that's the person they think you are. And then you ask a stranger, what does this person look like? And it is far more accurate to that moment of what that person looks like. We are literally holding ourselves in the same space, right? We are who we used to be for the people in our lives. And so often, even when it isn't someone who you need to permanently distance from, right? There's so much good that can come from temporary distancing and then becoming who you are and then moving forward. And I'm sure that you see that so often in, in the change. It's really hard to make a change while you're dragging everybody else along yes. with you, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you're so right. And it, yeah, right. It, it doesn't mean that that, has, that person has to be out of your life forever. But in order for you to make some changes, oftentimes that means to pause. Right. That that just means put this person on pause or put this relationship in a different space in your life and then see where it fits back in to the new you. Yes, I love that. And so let's talk a little bit about the new you. OK, where do you want to start? <laughs> <laughs> well, that new you. So we we really kind of hit on that. We can define it. We can uh, choose it. We are choosing it moment by moment and we're choosing it moment by moment in our minds and in our hearts and how we feel about the things that we think. So like we've got the complete system. We know how to run the spacesuit now. So what happens when people go like, okay, it's kind of like riding the bicycle when you're a little kid, right? I got this. And then you get, you know, three rungs down the road and you fall over. So can we talk about what that process of becoming the new you as you go on? Like, for instance, you spoke about a client who ha does have it. She's got it. And yet there's still a place where she went like, oh, I can coast. I don't have to keep cycling. I can just coast. And the, that's part of our experience throughout, right? So I'd love to hear how that changes uh, when we have a different relationship to that to that vigilant, positive mindset, um, how it changes the outcomes and and how we can navigate that a little bit better. As you were saying, you know, I was speaking speaking to a client earlier today who was like, I mean, I wanted her to share about her her story, and she said, but I kind of took steps back. I said, fabulous. Let's share. Let's talk about it um, because it is part of the journey. But what she said, and this just made my heart sing, was she said, it was so much easier for me to jump back in and refocus because I had that foundation, because I had already figured out what my deep rooted why was. I understood the the foundational pieces of just and mentally I was I was still in a space where I needed to be. And so making a few tweaks kind of helped her helped her along the way. So, you know, that that's why that's why this part is so important is really doing that work early on. But when we are talking about going from 
getting the ball rolling or, or I always say, use that first domino, push that first domino down and then everything kind of gets in, in place and how we keep along that path. Um, and we can dive into the why in a moment, but that's, that's one piece is really getting deeply rooted into what that why means. I think that word is kind of thrown around a little bit too much these days. Um, but, but I'll, I'll discuss that in a moment if you want. But, um, the other piece of this is that we have to practice this on a daily basis. And one of the things that we do is that we have to celebrate those wins. We have to celebrate the things that we are doing, what we are capable of, what happened well. And I mean, and we call these in our community, we call these NSVs, non-scale victories, because I don't give a crap what your number is on the scale. I wanna know that you're doing the real hard work. Stepping on the scale is easy, and that does not tell us how we're growing at all, physically or mentally. And so we call these non-scale victories because they are the little things, those micro changes that are happening, they are creating huge changes and, and impacts and the compound effect, if you ever read that book, um, if you haven't read that book, read the compound effect because that you'll, you'll get it. Um, but those, those NSVs, that's, that's how we help maintain that proper mindset. Once we get focused and once we start that domino, um, and so we talk about what that means. So maybe that means something like, Hey, I had one diet Coke today. Normally I would have had five by 2, 2 p.m. today. So it could be something like that, or it could be like, instead of going to Chick-fil-A today, we cooked at home. It could be, I did a 15 minute workout. I slept for eight hours. It Small, small victories every day compound into those larger things. The other, there's two other things here that I think that's really important to practice on a daily basis. And that is giving yourself grace. We talk about progress over perfection every single day in our community um, because growth happens when we make mistakes. We don't grow when we're, we're coasting. We don't grow when everything seems to be working out in our favor. We grow when we're struggling. We grow when we do have those missteps. And so knowing that there was a purpose for this to happen in my journey, this misstep was, was meant to me, for me to learn and grow from, that's where that progress over perfection comes from. And that's where we need to know that your journey is imperfect and it was never meant to be perfect, so to speak. And, and in my opinion, perfection is a myth. Um, and then the other, the other piece here is the support. And I talked about the community a moment ago, but, but just surrounding yourself socially with the people that are in your life that are there to impact you to be better, um, is, is something that, you, you can't feel again, not so, super tangible, but you can't feel it until you're part of it. And you're like, Oh yeah, now I get it. These people are making me level up in ways that I didn't know I could level up. Um, I, I will share this one thing because I do this every day and I just feel like it has helped me grow as a mom, as a wife and a, a professional is that I, I give myself daily mantras. And I started doing this when I felt like, life was caving in. <laughs> you know, you get to that space where you're like, oh, I feel overwhelmed. Uh, you know, I have three kids and I have a business and my husband has two businesses and uh, everything feels hard. And so I started telling myself, okay, what? All right. All these negative thoughts are creeping in my head. I started writing them down and I turned them around to be something positive. So what negative things are you telling yourself and how can you turn them around and keep these positive daily thoughts close to you. So like, instead of saying, I'm so stressed out, I started saying, I'm calm. I'm capable. I'm capable of the tasks in my day. I'm capable of all the things that come my way and I do not do overwhelm. And so I started saying those things, but also, I don't know, but I'm about you, but um, this is, this is what I do. Post-it notes. I, I, I write it down again, I love my phone. I put it on my phone, but I also write things down. I keep them with me. I have, this is actually one of them right here. Um, I have one in my office. I have one in my bathroom on my wall. So I'm reading them and I'm saying them aloud. And oh my goodness, the power of reading it and saying it 
over and over again. Again, that practice pulling the weeds out is a recipe for success. Fantastic. Those are great tips. And I am also a, per a paper person, so I totally get that. I love to see things big. And, uh, and when I see them, I know they exist and I know they're real for me. And that makes it much, much easier to just reach for that thing when you're, when you're like not used to reaching for that, you know? So that's awesome. That's great. So, uh, so you, let's talk a little bit about that. Why? because you, you referred to that just a little bit and I would love to uh, touch on that before we uh, end the podcast. So, you know, I mentioned that the, this word why is it's kind of thrown around like, what's your why, what's your why? And, and it's easy to, to have that quick answer of, oh, it's because whatever the response might be. And that's, that's a great place to start, but I think that's only it. It is a starting point. So when I say why, I don't mean something surface level as that first response. I mean, dig into it. And so it, when I say surface level why and speaking, you know, in the wellness space, if you ever decided like you wanted to lose weight for a reunion or summertime to get into your bathing suit and, you know, fit in your skinny jeans, whatever, what happens there when you say that's your why is that maybe you'll make some progress physically, you'll drop some water weight, you'll drop some pounds, maybe some inches, but then what? You're back to where you started because it's not sustainable, it's not deep enough. And that's why we have the word yo-yo and why it's so very popular because we don't know how to dig in deeper than surface level to, to so many things. And so when we're talking about a sustainable why, it goes so much deeper than that. And it's something that I always say, when you dig into it, it's something that you find like, oh, I don't wanna give up on this. This is something that really is meaningful. And so what we do with this is, it's called the five why challenge. And, um, we just start with the question why and so you know it can just be write down what it is that you want to achieve whatever you know whatever the subject is again i'll, I'll use wellness because that's my my area and so maybe you just say um I want to lose 15 pounds. Like, why do, why do you want to make a change? I, I want to lose 15 pounds. That's the very first why. Okay, great, but that's not your why. So then you ask yourself again, why do I want to lose 15 pounds? And then you answer it. Maybe the answer is I want to fit back into my jeans again. Then you ask yourself again, why do I want to fit back in my jeans? So you continually use the response to ask the next why. Why do I want to fit my skinny jeans? And maybe the response is, I want to feel uh, more confident and comfortable in my clothes. Okay, why do I want to feel confident? Maybe the response there is because I'm holding myself back. I'm not social. I want to be more outgoing. I want to have fun with friends. Then you ask yourself again, why do I want to be social? And then maybe that very final response and that you do it this five times, that's why it's called the five why challenge. Maybe that final response of having deeper relationships is that you feel isolated, you feel lonely, and you wanna have fun in your life. That, that's your why. So suddenly we started with, I wanna lose 15 pounds, to I feel isolated and lonely, and I wanna have fun. So think about that for a minute, 15 pounds, isolated and lonely and want to have more fun. What's more impactful and meaningful? And so when we talk about your why, that's what I mean. We have to dig deeper. And sometimes five, the five whys is not enough. Sometimes you want to go a little deeper, especially if it's the first time that you have done this activity, you may want to do six or seven because it takes a while to be totally honest with ourselves about what it is that we want, how it is that, that we want to feel. But eventually you get to the real underlying motivation for whatever it is that, that you're after. Very nice. I appreciate you giving that tool to our listeners and uh, it's a great tool. So thank you for sharing. And um, now I wanna make sure before we end that everybody has a way to get in touch with you. Of course, we link everything on all the platforms, but tell us a little bit about what you've got going on. Yes, so you can find us burnfatandfees.com as our website. You can contact us there. You can email info at Burn Fat and Feast. We are on Instagram, Burn Fat and Feast. We are on LinkedIn, Burn Fat and Feast, Pinterest, 
you find us anywhere, Burn, Fat, and Feast, basically. We also have a podcast, the Burn, Fat, and Feast podcast, and we offer a free five-day trial uh, a few times a year, and so we do have one coming up, and it's a great way to hop in, learn about what we do. I talked about the wellness puzzle a little bit today. We talk about all the areas of the wellness puzzle, starting with mindset. We talk about your why. Of course, we do fitness and nutrition, but we talk about hormones and metabolism, that community support that's so incredibly important as well. So it's a really good way for you to see what we do and how we do it to see if it's a good fit for you. Um, so we offer that, uh, we're offering that at the end of September. So it's a great, great time to jump into that. Super, thank you so much for being here today. It was really, really a great interview for our listeners to be able to connect and really get the idea between what we think and what reality is. So. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. All right, guys, we will see you next week.